Thank you very much indeed, and may I say what a pleasure it is to be here. And what a refreshing change that I'm not standing in front of a whole lot of members of the German media, which is, of course, what happened in, in, in Bonn for the intercessionals. Um, it's, it's great to see um, our members of the, our local media. So first of all, I wanted to say um, that uh, the, the Fijian team is making good progress uh, towards COP23 that we are currently having a consultation as a national uh, presidency team together with our expert advisors to discuss the progress that we've already made, the uh, developments in various streams of negotiations at, uh, at, for COP23 and some of the expected outcomes. So um, it's been a very useful meeting. We will continue to uh, liaise with each other regularly. Uh, there are only 90 days left for COP23, so it's now really countdown time. And some of the important milestones that we have ahead of us between now and COP23 is um, a heads of delegation meeting in Rabat in the beginning of September, where the heads of uh, national delegations will get together to talk about their expectations uh, of Fiji's presidency at COP23. Uh, we will also have a meeting, uh, we will also attend the meeting of the EU, uh, China and Canada in Montreal, also in September, on the 15th and 16th. And uh, that will be followed by, of course, the General Assembly and what is commonly known as Climate Week uh, during the General Assembly when um, civil society members get together with state parties to talk about what they would like to see in COP23 and how they see developments in climate policy internationally. So these are very, very important events uh, in which the presidency will take a very active role. Um, we are looking forward to this. It's very, very important that we maintain the vision of the Paris Agreement and the vision at Paris, that also we ensure that the work that is now required to implement the Paris Agreement is done, and that it is done in a very constructive and progressive spirit, uh, keeping in mind at all times the spirit of the Paris Agreement and the need and the urgency uh, to really maintain work towards the Paris Agreement implementation. In addition to the work on the implementation of the Paris Agreement, Fiji is very, very um, involved in the design for the facilitative dialogue. The facilitative dialogue was something um, which is planned for 2018. It is uh, something that's going to happen under our presidency, uh, whilst we are, of course, preparing for the presidency of Poland, uh, who, which will have the presidency of COP24. And the purpose of the facilitative dialogue is to enhance ambition. Um, so uh, this is a very, very important event uh, for, for the climate world and Fiji is very privileged because we are responsible for designing the facilitative dialogue for next year and then, uh, and of course, uh, because we continue in the role of the presidency next year to ensure that it is effectively um, and purposively uh, implemented. So uh, these are some of the important outcomes that we have been discussing and I'm happy to say that we have very good, made very good progress in working towards COP23. So those are my overall uh, comments and I'm willing to take any answers, questions that you have for me to answer. Do you identify your uh, name and your One must say, I mean, from uh, legend FM news, what would be specific albums that, that would basically be used to, to achieve common understanding for the negotiations? I think it's really important that at COP23 we remind the international community of nations about what the Paris Agreement was about and about the extraordinary consensus that was achieved in Paris and why. And I think, you know, from the point of view of a Pacific small island state, which is for the first time taking the presidency of COP23, it's important that we take to the negotiations our consciousness of what it is like to have the urgency of, of the impact of climate change on our environment to the negotiations. So whilst we have this global responsibility of ensuring that we have consensus internationally, the fact is no one in the room will ever forget that we're from the Pacific. And so I think one of the very important common features that we will have in these negotiations is a sense of urgency, the need to really see action, the need to ensure that the Paris Agreement has some meaning and is effectively implemented. So I think that must be the common thread. Everything else must be a means to the end 
of the implementation of the Paris Agreement in the spirit in which it was passed. Are, are there, um, as chief negotiator, are there fears that the, 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 the sensitivity to the situation would have decreased a bit, considering that the U.S. has pulled out? I think our Prime Minister has already expressed regret that that took place. But I think we are continuing to hope to engage uh, with the United States and indeed are continuing to engage with the United States. There's no doubt at all that we think that the United States continues to be an important uh, part of the work towards COP23. They are, they are still a, a member state. Um, and in addition to that, I think that um, the, the consensus that was reached in Paris needs to be reinforced, even if the United States may not remain within the Paris Agreement. The fact is that the other countries have remained, and that impetus continues, and the vision continues. So I think Fiji has an important role in, as, as the presidency to ensure that the vision of the Paris Agreement is maintained, that in a way it's reignited even. Uh, because of the, the political realities of today. But in relation to the United States, we continue to work with them, we continue to engage with them, and we continue to consider them a valuable uh, part of the, uh, of the negotiations. Madam, and we then move on from the future times. My question then relates to the progress and reporting of the actual targets that member states have put together. Can you tell us about some that have been inspiring in light of the uninspiring well, what I think was really um, encouraging was um, the determination of state parties to the Paris Agreement at the intercessional meetings in May in Bonn to continue with the work and to make sure that the work is done. And of course, there are two main streams of work that I'm talking about particularly, although there are many streams of negotiations and several important outcomes that we should expect for COP23. But I now talk about the two streams. One is the implementation guidelines of the Paris Agreement, and the other is the work on the facilitative dialogue. Taking the second first, the facilitative dialogue, we conducted a number of consultations in Bonn. Uh, with states parties as well as with non-state parties because of course civil society is a very important component of these discussions and uh, it, it was really really quite moving and encouraging to see the level of commitment that remains in the world towards ensuring that the Paris Agreement makes sense that it is going to have meaning and that there is a process of implementing it so we didn't see a wavering of that conviction and I think that's a very positive thing. And for the facilitative dialogue, over and over again, we heard the purpose of this dialogue is to enhance ambition. The purpose of this dialogue is to give meaning to the Paris Agreement. And the purpose of the dialogue is to see where we are. If we are not doing so well uh, on, on the progress that we were supposed to make, well, how do we now move to a place where we are doing better globally as a community? And the other very important message that came out of the consultations is that the Paris Agreement was never intended to create a regime where people are pointing fingers at each other and blaming each other. And we saw that spirit in the facilitative dialogue consultations as well, where over and over again we heard from state parties, we don't want this to be a blame game. We don't want countries to sit in the room and say, well, you're not doing so well. How are you going to do better? I think, generally speaking, we hope that the dialogue will be a process where we all learn from each other and where we discuss very frankly experiments within our own countries which didn't work so well and which did, so that we all collectively, as a, as a global community, learn what is going to work better. So that, I think, was a very positive thing, the level of consensus that I saw during the consultations on the facilitative dialogue. Moving to the implementation guidelines of the Paris Agreement, which is sometimes called the rule book of the Paris Agreement, the um, work, of course, is being handled by the ad hoc um, group on the, on the uh, Paris Agreement uh, implementation. And that is chaired by two very, very competent chairs who are responsible for hearing all the submissions, uh, putting together some kind of progress for COP23, so that we are confident that at COP24 there will be a negotiating text. 
So the challenging part in relation to the implementation guidelines is that progress on some parts of the, of the guidelines um, is more encouraging than other parts. And I suppose that's logical and to be expected. But the presidency's role is to try and see that any progress that is monitored at the end of this year shows a balance, that the commitment remains the same in relation to all agenda items uh, of the, of the uh, APA. So um, a challenge for, for the presidency and, and something that I think that we take very seriously as a presidency is really being encouraging and uh, hoping that the work of the APA will continue on a positive path so that at COP23 we can announce that positive progress has been made and this is the evidence of it. So we haven't quite reached there yet, we're still working on that. Um, as I've said, the APA uh, co-chairs are extremely competent, uh, they are very experienced uh, negotiators in their own right, and so um, it, we continue to be in touch with them to see how progress is going and, and to meet with them to see how the presidency can help in this process. But we still don't know how much progress we're going to make until perhaps towards, uh, towards COP23 itself. Um, the third very, very important uh, aspect of COP23 is ensuring that um, as a developing country ourselves, uh, as a Pacific Island state, that um, Pacific Islands, the community of the Pacific, feels that it has an adequate voice in Bonn. Because of course, you know, when you have a COP at the other side of the world, it is challenging for Pacific Island countries to go there, for their civil society groups to go there. And so we are really looking out for an adequate representation of the Pacific, uh, both uh, non-state actors as, as well as state actors, to make sure that the Pacific really is represented in an effective way at COP23. Can you tell us some of the ways, ma'am, that you're looking out for the Pacific and ensuring yeah. bigger presence there? We had a CAP, uh, which I'm sure you, you attended, um, which was a Pacific consultation. And the purpose of the consultation to, was to ask the Pacific, which is our constituency, what do you want from us? What do you expect from our presidency? That was a very important consultation because it did ensure a level of translation from the Pacific to Bonn. And we've got a very clear outcome document uh, which tells us what the Pacific expects from us. Uh, the second is there are a number of um, processes by which more Pacific Islanders can come to Bonn. And one is um, uh, a, a fully funded program for Pacific women uh, who can come and attend the negotiations and the side events and activities in the Bonn zone. Um, and I hope that Pacific women take advantage of that because quite apart from adequate representation of the Pacific, it's also very important that more women are represented in the UNFCCC processes. So uh, those are some of the ways in which we're doing that. Uh, the Prime Minister um, uh, during the Oceans Week had a consultation with Pacific leaders uh, in New York to also discuss what they expected from COP. So, and the process of consultation is continuous. Um, we have uh, a good relationship with the Pacific Islands in the, in the process of other types of uh, consultations, for instance the High Ambition Coalition, uh, which is chaired by the Marshall Islands, and so there are uh, many ways in which we continuously hear the voices of the Pacific. So it's very encouraging. Uh, this is a, a, a COP where we do expect a good representation of Pacific Islands in, in Bonn. What do they expect the most from you and how do you intend to deliver? They expect from us what the rest of the world, I think, expects from us, and that is progress on the implementation guidelines of the Paris Agreement, and they expect to have a design launched of the facilitative dialogue. And um, certainly in relation to the facilitative dialogue, um, I think we are quite confident that we will show a, a, a design for the world. Um, and in relation to the implementation guidelines, if we continue on the path that we are going now of working closely uh, with, the, with the chairs of the APA and, and, and encouraging them without in any way driving the process, and this is, uh, this is the delicacy of the situation, the presidency must encourage, must be there to, to help, but must in no way drive state parties into decisions. This is a state-driven process. Um, I think that those are the two expectations from the Pacific. But in, a, in addition to that, they hope for outcomes on oceans, for instance. They hope for a translation of the oceans outcome in, in New York um, to, to Bonn. 
And so we're working on the possibility of that to see how that can be done, how that can be either introduced through the action agenda or through other high level events. Um, there was some discussion on the need to have um, discussions on displacement and of course one of the things that is going to be uh, a part of COP23 is in fact the report of the Warsaw International Mechanism to COP at COP23 on the progress and the work program of the Warsaw International Mechanism. So that's a very important report also because it, this is the loss and da damage um, uh, part of uh, climate change work which is of, of, of interest to the Pacific. So these are just some of the outcomes uh, that they would like to see some results on, and you will be able to find the full document on, their web on the website of COP23. Uh, if we see, I just thought, is for the Pacific Collective, are there any non-negotiable points that they're signing by going into COP23? Non-negotiable points for Fiji? For, yes. I think um, I think that you know we should proceed on the basis that nothing is is non-negotiable. So that um, you know our approach to COP23, our, the methodology of the Fijian presidency is that this is an inclusive and participatory process. So we're very very keen to ensure that people who want to be heard should be heard that processes are as inclusive as possible and that um, what Fiji will bring to COP23 is this inclusive, what the Prime Minister called the Buller spirit, but I, it, what, what of course we know, being Fijians, we know what this means. This means inclusion, it means listening, it means empathy, um, but at the same time of course we are always bound by the UNFCCC processes. Uh, we are <coughs> always bound by the rules of practice of the UNFCCC. So we're aware of those, but we want to infuse uh, in the in the UNFCCC processes this inclusion and participation. Madam, sorry, excuse me. In um, Mandi, in um, October, the mini COP, as, as it's been tagged, can you tell the us what role that will play towards um, COP23? And how is the Secretary come about in terms of the preparation of that? Pre-COPs are intended to help um, the presidencies to really fine-tune what are going to be some negotiation sticking points and help us to isolate those, help us to discuss with states parties how they can be resolved so that we can achieve a consensus and what additional ideas they can give the presidency to assist us in the process for COP23. So pre-COP is a preparatory process. It is a process which helps the presidency to have a successful COP. So the, the purpose of pre-COP really, apart from the fact, and it's very important that it's in Fiji, because it does ensure that the Pacific Islands are well represented at pre-COP, which is a, a very important part for us. Um, the purpose of pre-COP is to well really help with the negotiations. And although it's also an opportunity to showcase a number of important issues from the point of view of the action agenda, from the point of view, for instance, of NDC development and, and building on NDCs and ensuring that the process of NDCs is more efficient, um, and that's an important opportunity, particularly for the Pacific communities to contribute to that discussion, actually the purpose of a pre-COP is to assist the negotiations. And so it's very important for me as the chief negotiator to hear very keenly what states parties have to say about how they can assist the negotiations, how they can move them faster, how, for instance, in the implementation guidelines, we can move towards a consensus faster, but also to really um, ensure that there is a constructive level of, level of discussion. So a pre-COP is not intended to be like a conference. It's a dialogue. And it's supposed to be a dialogue which is honest, which is constructive, and which has a purpose. And that is to make more efficient the negotiations at COP. So that really is the purpose of it. We have already, uh, were re already well on the way to the organization of pre-COP. Um, and I think very soon you will see uh, the signs of all that organization on our website and so on. Final question for the morning. You are doing well today, aren't you? <laughs> is to do with um, representation and awareness uh, up to COP23 and at COP23. 
I understand that in May you made a call out to the international media to come to pre-COP and, and make a concerted effort to um, to come to COP23. How much of an effort is is your is the Secretariat making to get the Pacific media into all the COP uh, events between now and November? I understand that there have already been uh, efforts made here in Fiji to ensure that the Fijian media is represented. And, and I understand a number of uh, media organizations, I, I believe some of the persons in this room will be in Bonn and will be covering, covering the, uh, the negotiations and, and the events. That's a very important step because I think this will be the first time that so many members of the Fijian media will be attending a COP. So that's already an important step. Um, in relation to the Pacific uh, media generally, I think that our team has already encouraged members of the Pacific media to be, to be in Bonn because this is an important COP for the Pacific. Um, and really, I think it's, you know, having heard the call, I think members of the Pacific media really should try to be there. And I, I suggest it again today that it would be not only it, would it be very encouraging to see more Pacific Islanders at COP, but to see members of the Pacific media at COP and covering both aspects of the agenda, both the Buller Zone with the negotiations and the Bond Zone with the Action Agenda. The Action Agenda is a very important um, formula for, um, for the media because it helps to translate all the work that is done around the world, not just by states, but by non-state parties in relation to climate change. And some of the work is extraordinary, it's innovative, it's creative, and I would really encourage the Pacific media to, to cover the action agenda very closely because it is so encouraging. At the level at which uh, climate policy has now um, transformed the way that businesses, for instance, develop, uh, the way that um, work is done, the way that employment uh, is driven, is really very encouraging. There has been an enormous mindset change around the world and part of that mindset change has been the important role of the media in translating what people do to what people know and that in turn changes people's attitudes. So the fact that the Pacific media is going to be in Bonn to cover the action agenda, to cover what extraordinary things other countries have done, other non-state actors in other countries have done, helps to translate that innovation and creation to the Pacific. This is a very, very important role for the media at, at COP23. And again, I would really encourage the Pacific media to come to Bonn and to cover those events. We, we, we all know how important these negotiations are, but maybe what I'm sort of looking at here is maybe a message for me as the chief negotiator to the Fijian people. I'm, I'm talking maybe someone sitting in the city on Mandela who's in about COP23, but sort of can relate it to, to that level when we mentioned a high level meeting at the UN. Maybe just a message from you as chief negotiator to all those people and just, um, I, I think it, it's sort of a problem. You know. I think um, I'm about to say something that our Prime Minister has already said, but I will say it again. The relationship between our people and the environment has become so ingrained in our way of life that we sometimes take it for granted. But we should never take it for granted because our environment is in danger. And it is in danger from our own actions, from our own <coughs> activities. And so therefore, Fiji's role in COP23 is a role of, for the first time, having leadership in a position where we get to influence the way in which climate policy and climate governance internationally develops. And that necessarily translates to work in Fiji. And one of the important outcomes that we have for ourselves is that we then bring home to Fiji after COP23 is over, and you know Poland has taken over with the next presidency, what have we brought home to our people? And I hope that we bring home to our people, first of all, a greater capacity to understand the relationship between international governance on climate policy and national policy. And I also hope that in the course of the next few months, we will lift Fiji's own capacity to be climate change negotiators so that we become leaders in the world on climate policy and how it develops, how we are going to implement the Paris Agreement, how we are going to work together with more developed nations, for instance, to ensure that we have a common vision. 
So all of that has an immediate impact on the person living in Naitasiri, who's working on the land, a, p a person who's living in a village and who's wondering why the coastline is disappearing so rapidly. These are important issues and there is a direct relationship between our coastline disappearing and what is going to happen in Bonn at COP23. Do you have any other questions? Um, I'll pass you uh, about the council email. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed.